I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. This is Matt Twin City. I'm welcome back to another review. This is another Patreon review for Johnny. And thank you once again to everyone who has joined me on my Patreon, as well as the people who have sent me requests via PayPal. If you're ever interested in either one of those, the links to my PayPal or my Patreon, well, both of them will be down below in the info box. If not, I understand. But the, the review for today is House of Clocks from 1989 which is a Lucio Fulci movie. I'm not a big Lucio Fulci guy. I will admit this was okay. I did not hate the film. I don't love it, but I didn't hate it. Now granted, none of the characters are likable, but the way it's done, technically there's no reason to care about any of the characters. So it's not like, they're unlikable on purpose. That's what I'm getting at. Now, I will say the plot, even though it makes no damn sense, is kind of interesting setup where you have this old couple that lives in this house with a ton of clocks. They have a maid. They also have this guy who sort of the groundskeeper and we're trying to find out that down below in the, in the cellar is the couple's niece. Well, the couple's, was it the nephew and then the nephew's wife? And they're dead. I guess they wanted money or something of the sort. And the couple killed them. So then the maid, she doesn't, it doesn't really seem like she's going to tell anybody anything. It didn't even seem like she knew what was going on. So I didn't really understand this, but she didn't seem like nervous or oh, like she found the dead bodies. Oh my God. No, she just was kind of going on her business. Didn't really act weird or anything. And then the old, of the old couple, the, the woman stabs the maid in the crotch with the spear. And it was fairly graphic. Now, this, I keep seeing that this was made for TV, and I'm like, <laughs> Lucio Foshi must not know what the fuck made for TV means. So, one thing I heard was yes, it was made for TV, supposedly, but Lucio Foshi made it so gory that, of course, none of that could happen. And then went just like straight to video. So I did technically it was supposed to be made for TV, but apparently Fulci thinks if you stab a woman in the crotch with a spear, that's made for TV material, let alone some of the other gory stuff in this. Hell, this is gorier than the last film I saw, Don't Torture a Duckling. And this was supposedly for TV. But I was talking about the, the setup so the the couple you know the maid gets killed the old couple obviously they're maybe in the future they're the fucking people from the visit and that Shyamalan Dean Don's film for all I know could be that'd be a fucking and that Shyamalan would love that for a twist so next you have these three characters two guys and a woman 
who they're kind of pieces of trash too because one of them is such a complete asshole they take a cat and they stuff it in a fucking plastic bag a sack and the girl's like oh you shouldn't do that but she, then she doesn't fucking do anything she's not you motherfucker stop it like she doesn't try to stop it she's like says a couple words but then five seconds later like a dean bat's like I'm like, you're just as guilty as the motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck about anybody. And yes, you can have films where most of the people are not the most moral folks. Reservoir Dogs, you could say that's the case. But that's where you got to get the writing or the acting or other avenues on their A game for that. Here, though... I don't really care for pretty much anybody, so I, apparently on purpose. So that's why I can't say I love the film. But considering the last Lucio Fulci I saw was, I thought, fairly boring. This one went at a good pace. It's a short film. It's only an hour and 20 minutes. I keep talking about the setup. I haven't gone to it yet. The, the plot, the three go in. All three, they kill the old couple and the groundskeeper but then all the clots start going backwards for some reason no explanation there's never an explanation for it i just simply because those characters dead i might well the maid died and the how the clots didn't go back you have a dead nephew and nephew wife in the cellar the clots didn't go back but because of these people dying then the clots start to go back. And that represents not really time not really time travel, but more something else with time. I don't fucking know how to explain it because this would mean it's it's confusing and it doesn't make any sense, but it's kind of an interesting idea. That made me go wonder what's going to happen next. Because. The couple can't leave. They stay the night. Two of them are fucking. The other guy's like fuck it. I can't get any protein pie. He's walking around. And then the bodies that they took and hid. The back where they originally were. And then you have this figure shoot the guy through the door into his stomach. Did some pretty decent gore. I'll do that. This has some decent score. An alright score. It was a short film. And it has some decent direction. You know, some good looking shots. You know, camera work. The way things are framed. Little bits like you have a little POV of a guy walking around the house. When uh, someone flips a light switch, the camera pulls back. The idea, there's some decent camera work, direction. They try to make a movie that, to him, would make it on TV. I don't know how with the gore, but to him, he I guess he thought he would. To, to spice it up a bit. So it's that I might have been confused and I might not have liked anybody, but I wasn't bored. I'll, I'll give you that. And so the the old couple, the groundskeeper, have been reanimated because these clots are going backwards. Also, like the the younger girl, her and her butt buddy are looking for their friend. She has a little scuffle with the used to be dead woman. The younger girl gets stabbed in the hand with a knife. The reason I mention that is because when she gets out of there, gets with her buck buddy and they find the guy who's been shot in the stomach and he's still alive, which is about okay. They try and get out this window and then the girl goes, oh my God, my hand, it's healed. 
So I guess this whole reverse in time heals people like Wolverine. Okay, but how come your hand healed, but your fucking buddy who got shot way before you got cut and has a fucking bullet hole in his fucking stomach, shotgun shell, how come he's not getting healed? Like these other people came back from the dead, he's not he's not getting healed. Why? Why is he not getting healed? Why are the nephew and the other nephew wife not getting healed? At least not right away. You think they'd be the the first? But no. They do later. Much, much later, but it's like well, why did it take that them <laughs> so long? But you're looking for logic, you're looking for fault, you felt you shouldn't. I don't know why Fulci gets to pass on that. If it was the same film, but it was John Carpenter or Wes Craven or something else, they wouldn't get that pass, so I don't know. I mean, I like Zombie with that Lucio Fulci did. I would say I think that's his best one. I don't mind the Gates of Hell as this one being kind of a don't mind the little bit of atmosphere in the house with all the clocks around again pieces of direction and gore but it does get confusing because these two are such great friends that they leave their buddy who's been shot in the stomach they get out of the window. They're leaving. Duh, 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 duh. And I'm like, you're not going to help the guy who's been shot in the stomach. And then he's screaming for help. And like, oh shit. And then they run back. I'm like, you don't, you care? Really? You left your fucking buddy with a shotgun shell like up his ass. Lit might as well be. But you know, they find him in that cellar. By that window, they kill him. The the young lady's butt buddy, the, the maid, has now been brought back to life. And the maid kills that guy. I don't know why. Does this... Well, I mean, I guess you just want to kill if you come back. Maybe, but not really. Watch out, get to. And then the maid, like, diss the fucking peers. And the young lady goes down the cellar finds the nephew and wife's nephew's wife's bodies and then they wake up and they killed the old couple so the reanimated nephew and nephew his wife killed the reanimated old couple the woman gets like her net broke in the guy gets impaled decent gore fat the maid, by the way, has disaffected She must have went to the John taking a shit or something. I don't know. And then the girl, the young girl escapes. She's walked away. Then she wakes up in her car with her two friends. And then they're wondering, oh, we must have gotten really high. But then, no, it really did happen because the cat that the asshole put into the sack who died because of that is brought back to life. Scratches the guy. I'm like, well, they get their just desserts because they crash and they, they do die. And then back at the estate, the nephew and the wife and the maid, they're the holders of the house now. It's like, wait a minute. So if you get brought back to life and you're just not about, you need to kill someone. Because if they would, then wouldn't the maid kill them and them kill the maid? And no, apparently just whatever you feel like it. And if that's the case, then why the fuck did the maid kill, but didn't kill? But like even the girl like the girl never died so it's not like oh she was part of this loop so I'm gonna stop talking about the plot because it makes no goddamn sense if you try to think about it P 
people, I'm sure this should be a rant, but I don't know, I'm watching and it was so discombobulating and such a strange little story. But for, uh, I might be confused, but I wasn't bored. I keep saying that. Didn't mind the direction, some of the camera work, the idea of a house with all these clocks in it. I think some of the subject matter story ideas could be interesting enough to then utilize it in better movies. I I just see the potential of that. You know, the clots going back and then people being resuscitated. I think that's an idea that could have a seed planted and bloom into something much better than this movie. The door was entertaining when it's there. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck he would have passed this off for TV since it was supposed to be made for TV. But here, apparently Fulci, maybe like, I don't give a fuck. We'll make you figure that shit out. And again, good luck. It'd be easier to find Jimmy Hoffa's body than to decipher this entire story B for B for, to make it any bit of sense. But is that the when I say confused? By the way, it's I'm understanding what's going on, but I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why did this happen? And why did that happen? And why did that happen? And like the girl leaves, but then she wakes up in a car with her two friends who are now alive again, and they're not even in the house. Like she wasn't even in the house. So it's not just if you're in the house with the clots going back, it could be if you're outside of the house too. And it's not just if you die, because she wasn't dead. She was just walking outside, and then boom, she's like. That's what I mean. So I'm going to give up on that. But House of Clots, I guess if you're a big Lucio Fulci fan, go see it. I've seen much worse, much worse Fulci films. I'm glad that it was short and it didn't bore the fuck out of me. Again, there's certain concepts that were intriguing and you know, some of the gore was fun, direction was fun. I mean, and the bitches got what they deserve because don't, Fucking kill cats, you motherfuckers. The pussies are fine. Put the pussy down. You pet it. Not suffocate it. More ways than one. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in another video. Later.